welcome back. I am working on the old dump truck. Just pulled it in here. What I'm going to be doing. Cause I've got two new shoes that's going on the front. Uh, them broke the bank. These are a good ride. Uh, 11.225, them was the cheapest that I could find. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting them tars on these two rims. These are just some spare tars and wheels that we had. And what my plan is, is the front tars that's on here, I'm going to be taking them and putting here on the back right here. This tar here, I don't know how well you can see, if, even if you can. If not, I'll show you later. Uh, this tar here, I don't, know I don't know if you can see the waviness in it. It's got some pretty bad flat spots on it. Makes the truck ride rough. This tar here on the outside, it's actually too small. I put that tar on there. All the other tars are 11.225s. This tar here on the outside is a 295, 75, 22, 5. But I put that on there because this was the tar that was on it. it uh, it's got some bad flat spots on it too. Probably hard to tell on camera. But it's got some bad flat spots on it too. And uh, pretty slick. And it didn't want to hold air. So I had this other tar over here. And I figured a little smaller tar was better than no tar. Um, so like I said, I'm going to take the two that's on the front. Put them back here. Put the two new ones on the front. And I've also got new tie rod ends to go on it. I got two new tie rod ends to go on it. Um, the one on the driver's side, it ain't too terribly bad. It's not too bad, but the one on the passenger, it's pretty bad. Let's see if I can get some light down in here. It's pretty bad. It's hard to tell right now, but either way, I got two new of them that I'm going to be putting on it too. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to start that right now, but I do have a plan to build a new tailgate. Uh, I've said before that I was going to build a new one. Uh, my plan is I'm going to go to the top of the cab guard there all the way here to the back which is going to put it about uh, about two foot taller sideboards and it's going to make the tailgate almost two foot taller as well uh, I'm going to be doing that for hauling silage to where I can get more on it I haul quite a bit of sawdust for Tiffany's Papaw for the horse camp and uh, for hauling grain so I want that door as tall as I can get it so the sawdust and silage will come out easy. And then like I said, it'll hold more too. This old tailgate here, it's beat up real bad. You can tell here it's latched. There's a big crack up through there. Uh, it's been patched right here, broken there, been patched up there. It's got a bad bow in it, the top down here at the bottom. So I'm just going to discard that all together and uh, build a new one. So, first thing I'm going to try to do, I guess, for now, see if I can get these tars and stuff broke down, get these new ones on. Um, I do have new valve stems that I'm going to be putting in as well. And, uh, yeah. 
So that's what I'm going to get started on. Who needs a tar hammer? So these valve stems that I've got, like I said, I got new ones. They're steel. They come with two rubber pieces. This one is bigger than the one that's on it. 
and I've got a bigger hole. So I've got to change these rubber pieces. You can see there on that one how small it is versus that one. I gotta have this one. So I'll tell you this too. Uh, sometimes, sometimes they won't blow up right off the bat. I try not to use a uh, blaster no more than I have to. So what I do, is I take my valve stem out or my valve core out. And then once that's out, I just take my into my air hole to stick over the end. I'm moving around a little bit. Now she's taken. What that does is that sends all the air that's in the line into the tar And then uh, all you got to do is put your valve core back. While that's there, I'll tell you a little story that happened to me a few years ago. It's been 11, 12 years ago now. All my growing up years, we always used ether on something like that because you never had a blaster. And, uh, and we put a little bit in the in the tar, light it, and it'll blow up, put your air in. So like I said, it's been uh, it's been 11 years ago. It was during silage. We uh, had a couple flat tars during the day. So that evening after we got done and everybody went home, I decided I was going to fix some tars and have them ready. So I got my tars and stuff put on. I put my ether in there. My first no-no was I was using a little map gas torch, like a little propane torch, to light it with. So I put my ether in there, went down to light it, just burn, and never would do nothing. So I got irritated. I done that two or three times, and there would blow up. I shook my can. I put me about a half a can in there. Reached down there, and when it lit, it blew, and it blew so hard that it come back up into the tank, the propane tank, and it blew the end of the tank off. So at that point, I had a flamethrower, and uh, I had on a cut-off shirt, and when it blew up, like I said, it blew the end of that tank off, and it burnt burnt me real bad up through here. Luckily, I didn't scar from it, but for a while, I had a blister. It was about that big on my forearm right here. Just a big old thick blister. So after that, I've been leery of using ether. I still do from time to time in bad situations. But, uh, I'll take a rag or something, tie on the end of a stick and get away from it. I'm a little bit gun shy. After the fact, I wound up building me a blaster and I use that quite a bit. Like I said, if I don't have to, I don't. I just do like I done right there. But anyway, there's a little story on what not to do on the point up tar.
So sometimes, <sighs> you can see me checking them. When you're taking these loose on these old dating wheels, these keepers will get hung. And if you pull the nut off, and it's still got pressure on it, it could pop, come out and hit you. What I usually do is just back them off about halfway and smack them with a hammer and make sure that they're loose, but these are coming loose. So. I'm a believer in anti-seeds. So back of this, a renter left out here, and uh, there's a kitten out there. I felt sorry for it. Thought I'd bring it out here and let it catch mice and stuff. It's a little bit on the aggravating side. Ain't she? Hmm. Huh. 
Well, we're into the following morning here. I've been working on these tie rods. I got this one on the pasture side. I've done got it off. It wasn't too bad, so maybe uh, maybe this driver's side won't be as bad. I got my Carter key and stuff out, so I've got to get the nut off and drive it out. Well, that part wasn't too bad, but I'll show you. Here's the driver's side. And here's the passenger side. They're pretty bad. So now, this may be an issue. I ain't got no oxygen. I'm out of oxygen for my torch. So that, uh, that may be an issue. But I'll see, uh, I'll see what I can get done here. All right. I got them loose. Got the new ones put on. Like I said, I was out of oxygen to heat that up. So I went down here to the local equipment place and used their torch. So a big shout out to Broadhead Farm Equipment for that. Um, so I got them in. What I done just to get me a close estimate before I took it apart as I measured from the center of the ball to the edge of the pipe on each side and wrote that down. That way I could get pretty close um, on my toe end, you can see there where I've wrote down the measurements. So I think I'm going to be pretty close, close enough for this anyway. So I'm going to get this stuck back in here, and uh, I'll throw a tape on the back of the tar and on the front of the tar and see what I've got. And may adjust it a little bit, but I think I'll be pretty close.
That's pretty close. That's about a sixteenth off. I think that's where I'm going to leave it. So, I will tighten up my locks and let her be. So, I just had this thought. Uh, I know most of you know what this is. I know a couple of you is not going to. Uh, these are Dayton wheels, which uh, these are the tires that I took off. A Dayton wheel don't have no center in them, just the rim. And they go on with them clamps. And on the back, on the duels, you got this spacer ring right here. You can see right there. That's just a ring. And uh, you've got to have you've got to have this spacer ring in here to uh get your get your gap so your tars don't hit <coughs> and then this tar goes on like the one on the front and then the outside one goes on backwards and then you've got your you've got your keepers that go on but anyway like i said i just thought i'd show that i know most of you know what that is but i know some of you don't but that's how that goes you can see right here where it was hanging on before on the front but uh that's wedge shaped right here and your keepers are wedged so when they go on the tighter you get it the tighter it makes the wheel it wedges on there I don't know how well you can see, but you can see here what I was talking about when them go on. It wedges in and pushes everything up tight. Now it's real hard to get these tars, these Daytons, from wobbling. That's what I was doing yesterday when I was putting the fronts on. I had that board laid on there and I was spinning it, seeing just how much it was moving in and out to try to tighten and uh, get it from wobbling is bad <clears throat> but you can't hardly you can't hardly get these old Dayton wheels to uh, run straight 100% or at least I never have I'm going to take and uh, drive it around a little bit <clears throat> and then I'm going to come back and uh, hit these again and hit the ones on the front again just to make sure that they're good and tight. Well, I took her for a test run. She's driving a whole lot better, a whole lot smoother, not near as rough as it was. So I'm hoping maybe that'll, that'll get me by for a little while. Sometime I'll try to get me a new kingpin and put it on this driver's side. And... Uh, like I said, I'm going to try to work on this tailgate and stuff sometime shortly. Get it the way I want it. Get ready for grain and solid solid for to people. But anyway, that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.